Good afternoon and welcome to Keys News. Here's what we've got coming up for you today. Manchester is set to witness the biggest redevelopment scheme in the North West. When you tip, did you know that sometimes it doesn't go fully to the waiting staff? Things could be about to change. And happy birthday to Swinton Lions Rugby Club for celebrating their 150th anniversary. Volunteers gathered in the Trafford Centre at midnight to take part in a terrorism training exercise. The mock terrorism attack featured a man dressed in all black entering the food court and detonating an explosive. Volunteers were given up to given makeup to resemble horrific injuries. The exercise, which took five months to plan, was a test run for Greater Manchester Police and North West Counter -ter Terrorism Unit and the North West Ambulance. The biggest redevelopment scheme in the North West has arrived in Manchester, changing the city centre over the next 10 years. Our reporter, Gemma O'Reilly, went to find out more. The Noma project is a 20-acre regeneration of Manchester urban land. The scheme aims to both build and redevelop existing properties in North Manchester. With a budget of 800 million, the Noma project has been made attainable by the Cooperative Group and Hermes Real Estate. Late 2007, um, we decided we needed a new support centre and I was asked to go out and acquire a site. The acquisition of that site meant we ended up with around 20 acres in and around our existing estate and we then worked with the City Council to bring forward a massive regeneration project. We've always been based in Manchester. Um, the Cooperative Wholesale Society had its main uh, industrial and warehousing functions within this area of Manchester. And it's our heartland, I guess, is the honest answer, and there's a real emotional attachment to the northwest. When the cooperative so. group first planned the relocation of their existing estate, they looked at several areas of the northwest. With the greater interconnectivity in Manchester, it meant that they stayed in the city centre. With tram lines and electrified railway lines, it meant that projects like Noma had a greater talent pool, appealing to all businesses of all sectors. Because actually keeping and retaining talent is really, really important to any business. In December 2015, Noma teamed with Manchester City Council to introduce Manchester's first public square. Sadler's Yard is designed to showcase the city's entertainment and exhibitions. Individual shops and restaurants will surround the public realm that are different from the Manchester Rand area. Noma is creating a new neighbourhood. It's going to encourage people to, to work here, of course, but also to live here, uh, to shop here and to spend time here. It's a 24-7 environment where we hope people will really spend a, a, a lot of time with and extends the city centre out towards this part of Manchester. A place to live, work, create and innovate. Jem O'Reilly, Keys News. When life gives you lemons, you are supposed to make lemonade. But what's behind the images of the citrus fruit being projected around Manchester? The iconic Stone Roses logo has been appearing on digital billboards across the city. Last November, the band advertised their gigs at the Etihad Stadium through posters in shop windows. So far, the band have kept the juicy details to themselves. Proposed law changes to tipping waiters and bartenders have been stirring up controversy. There is a cocktail of opinions on how to change a tipping policy which shake up the business. Our reporter Alexandra Todorova went to find out more. New law could force Manchester bars and restaurants to hand over all tips given to service staff. The proposed legislation would see waiters and bartenders receive 100% of voluntary tips from customers. Currently, venues on average can take away 10% of all staff tips. We spoke to Adam Bailey about how this could shake up the business. It's going to help the business because it's, uh, it's going to improve speed. Basically, more people are going to be serving a lot quicker because they want to get those tips. Um, it's also going to help out with uh, the sharing the weight of the load. Um, a lot of people 
basically slack off, whereas other people are working hard and they can come back, serve two people and get more tips, which I just think is unfair. If you spread it out between who's working the most, it's going gonna, it's gonna to help out the business as a whole. If proposals are met, up to 15% of all of our old bills could be given to wait staff. However, some feel the change could be unfair to workers. I would stay with the way it is, because I feel like Everyone gets their own tips. But I, I don't think it's a bad thing because it's still shared amongst everyone and everyone will still work hard to get their tips out. So, What does the public think about this? I only tip if I've been given exceptional service and I'm tipping for the service from the individual that gave me that service, not for the restaurant and not for anybody else. That's uh, something he did, I mean the waiter, and he deserved it. Uh, 100% or 110%. If I want to tip certain uh, member of staff, I will give them cash in the hand personally. Alexandra Todorovo for Key News. Comic book stores across the world played host to the 15th anniversary of Free Comic Book Day. Manchester joined the celebrations, giving fans the opportunity to grow their collections at the weekend. With a chance to collect the likes of Spider-Man, Batman and Wonder Woman, many books were sold out by midday. A convention at the Sasha's Hotel had comics for sale from as far back as the 1950s give everyone in Manchester the chance to take home something super. Mancunians can enjoy culinary delights from around the world at the Manchester Street Food Market. Our reporter Yezwan Calvis got his taste buds tickled. A multicultural city is made by its people, but here, in Manchester, the mix of culture is represented by the food at the street food market in Manchester Piccadilly. Let's give a go. Running from Tuesday to Saturday, this market has changed through the years and has become in a signal of diversity. Well, when it started off, it was what they call a real food market, so the people selling cheese and meat, and then it changed it into, uh, into a street food market, so now they've got all sorts of different foods from all over the world. Yeah. There are options for all the likes, and its workers ensure every stall is a little piece of their country. Come, you know, we have a conversation, we talk about is somebody planning to go to Mexico or somebody already been in Mexico, we talk about Mexico. I'm not from Manchester, I'm from Canberra in Australia, but we have heaps and heaps and heaps of markets and all different types of food, all different like cultures coming together and families kind of running their own markets. And I think it really contributes like the atmosphere of a city, I really like it. So I'm from Pakistan, we don't have these markets in Pakistan, you wouldn't see markets from different you know, people having different markets like these. So it's really nice and I like visiting these. The best gastronomy from one continent to another is here, right in the city centre of Manchester. Come over and enjoy yourself. This one Calvis, Keys News. Hundreds of amateur swimmers took a plunge at the Manchester Open on Saturday. Martina Mosquiello was poolside to check out the competition. The Manchester Open has come this year to its 12th consecutive edition. Last Friday, competitors from all over the north of England tried their best to qualify for the National Swimming Championships, a dream that will only be achieved by the best time. Swimmers from all ages gathered this weekend at the Manchester Aquatic Centre to compete in various strokes and distances which vary between 50 metres and 1500 metres. It is a level one meet and by that it's um, by a level one meet it's one of the top level meets that you have in a swimming calendar. Uh, swimmers that are achieving quite fast times and most of the swimmers here will be looking to achieve like regional times or even national times. Backstroke, butterfly, breaststroke and freestyle were all races on the day. I got the times that I wanted and hopefully they're going to allow me to compete at the Nationals uh, later on in summer. Yeah, I'm satisfied with it. Um, it's the fastest I've been all season, so it's my season's best. So it's, it's better than, it's what I hope for to finish off the season with. It felt pretty good, uh, PV'd, so it's always... 
So it's nice to go faster than you've ever gone before. Are you happy with the result? Yeah, I, uh, I wanted to win my heat, which I did. Um, hurt a bit towards the end, but yeah, at the end of the day I won the heat, so I was quite happy. Boys and girls train up to nine times per week, which for most paid off, with many hoping to go on to bigger and better things in the future. Rugby league side Swinton Lions showed their pride at reaching their 150th anniversary. Our reporter Rob Hemingway joined in with the roars of approval. <laughs> Hello, I'm Rob Hemway here for Keys News. Today there is a rugby match going on behind me. We've got Swinton Lions playing against Whitehaven. However, that is not the only reason that we're here today. We are, of course, celebrating the 150th anniversary of Swinton Lions rugby team. <laughs> and we've, seen, we've come here to see what the fuss is about. <laughs> yes, we're buzzing. We're buzzing. <laughs> Uh, we are now joined by Steve Wilde, the CEO of Swinton Lions, who's had a huge part of organising today's events. And Steve, today you unveiled a very special kit, haven't you? That's right, this is our 150th anniversary uh, kit. Um, a very special kit based on our original colours, which were all navy blue. Because we've always played in blue, but uh, all navy blue goes right back to the very beginning. Um, the kit itself, not only got the, the new logo, but um, the uh, 150th anniversary logo, which is based on the original Lion insignia, dating back to the mid-1870s. And uh, within the fabric of the shirt, there's, there's the names of 150 famous players, um, each representing a relevant year from 1866 right through, to the, right through to the present day. So there's some really famous names on that. I'm now joined here with Bob Flea, who was the last captain uh, to win the Lancashire Cup with Swinton Lions. Hi, Bob. How's today been for you? Uh, well, it's half time now and it's not very well with Swinton, but today's been a great day. 150 years for everybody to come here. Uh, for me personally, to meet some old players who I've not seen for a very long time. Um, I just thought we can turn this match around in the second half and try and get two points with it. We are now joined by a very special fan, Swinton Lions. He's been to over a thousand consecutive matches for the team and got recognised for his achievement today with a lifelong membership. How has today been for you? Tell you about 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> As the score stands right now, Swinton are losing by four points, but they've brought it back. Do you think they'll get it back? I hope so. You know, we've not played too well first half, certainly better second half, you know, so it's looking promising. It's Always the optimist if you're a Swinton fan. <laughs> and what's it like to be recognised by the club with a lifelong membership? Well, I think the first time in 50 years I was speechless. And that's saying something if I'm speechless. <laughs> We've just had the final whistle here, and after Swinton were trailing by quite a margin at half time, we've managed to come back and win 32 26. It's been a great way to round up the 150th anniversary of Swinton. Now, you need not worry, that golden orb in the sky was the sun, but will it be here to stay? Jess Tiswell has the latest weather. Weekend and lovely day yesterday. Today we are likely to see some showers into the afternoon and possibly tomorrow as well. However, Thursday the sun should come out again with temperatures rising, taking us into the weekend. Have a lovely day. That's all for Keys News today and indeed for the academic year. The programme will return in September, but unfortunately we won't. Yes, that's right. Max and I are leaving, as are many other people, unfortunately. So we want to say thank you to everyone in the gallery and the studio. And in fact, everyone who took part this year in Keys News. Join in. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you.